Council. And thank God it's Wednesday. Wednesday it and is. And the time just keeps on moving, flying yeah. by. But we're having a wonderful time studying the Word of God. And so you can go ahead and share on your Facebook wall to somebody else so they'll jump on here. We're going to study the Word for one hour yeah. and studying on the life of Paul, the Apostle Paul, and also Paul's system of truth. And so our free book this week is the book, Paul's System of Truth, and uh, we'll send it to you absolutely free. The best way to get it is go to the website, markhankins.org, and say, I want the free book on the life of Paul or Paul's System of Truth. We'll send you that book. We're already sending out uh, bunches and bunches of them, and so we can study uh, Paul's revelation, the life of Paul, and uh, well, Paul's like System of Truth. This is like power-packed, dynamite. So much information. We've in this really book. had fun just going back over it it's after wonderful. so so many uh, years, and so it's wonderful revelation. Paul's system of truth. System it's our gift truth. to you, and uh, you go ahead and get the book. Then while you're at the website there, uh, you can also uh, download the free messages uh, on Paul's revelation, and this one here is on the precious blood of Jesus. So go to the website while you're there. Download these messages on the precious blood of Jesus. Four new messages on absolute remission, the hiding place. I remember that service oh, and so what good. happened from the cross to the throne. So new messages uh, just done just in the last 12 months on uh, the blood of Jesus. And so we just keep getting further light and further revelation on the blood. That's right. The more you look, the more you see. Yeah, yeah. so we get better <laughs> results. Yeah, and the more you pray <coughs> the prayers of Ephesians yeah. and Colossians and ask God to open our hearts and our eyes. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, the eyes he of our hearts. All right, we're going to, uh, my, my joke today, so I'll get you to laugh a little bit here. And uh, my joke today is about the man who uh, <laughs> was having trouble with his wife. So he finally just told her off. He said, I've had enough of this. And he just <laughs> told her off. Let her have it. How did it come out? He said, well, he said he didn't see her for three days wow. after that. And then he said, the third day, my left eye started to open up just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> she, she said, come out from underneath that bed. <laughs> she was a tough cookie. <laughs> she is a rough, rough, tough woman. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so uh, you know, Mark, all your jokes remind me of, the, of another joke. Uh oh, you got another uh, one. But no, no, no. Now this we'll is a miracle. If Trina is going to tell a joke, you know what? I'm going to tell. I have one joke. All right. What's yes. your one joke? You know the difference between <laughs> a Cajun zoo, a Cajun zoo, and a regular and a zoo. Regular zoo. Don't yeah. tell it for me. This is my joke, okay? All right. But you can help me out. You were you were Timing throwing in sentences good. while I was talking. Uh -huh. So you just read the harvest. I was responding. Harvest. Okay. All right. If you go to a regular zoo, yeah. you come to the display of the animal. It says on a sign attached to the, or in front of that display, you see the animal. Then you see the name yes. of that animal, yes. where it's from, yes. it's a habitat, etc. all these descriptions. Ah. And so that's a regular zoo. <laughs> but a Cajun zoo is a little different. You walk up to the cage, you see the animal, you see the sign with the name of the animal, uh -huh. but instead of the description of the animal, you see a recipe. Oh, how yeah. to eat, how to eat that. <laughs> how to put that animal in, you know, sauce pecan, you can put it in a oh. gumbo, you can put it in. Oh. Yeah, wow. well, yeah. I, I thought maybe if you went to a musician zoo, then it would have the animal and have a song. Ah, yeah, it's a musician zoo, and the song would be, hey, hey, we're the monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, maybe there'd be one say, you ain't nothing but a hound dog. You ain't nothing but a hound dog. Right. Anyway, that's my new one there. I just kind of made that up. We'll see how that works out. Uh, so uh, we love to laugh and enjoy. God gives us all things richly to enjoy. Yes. And that's one of the Apostle Paul's uh, letters and revelations. And laughter does good like a medicine. Wow. And so, it increases your blood circulation. Yeah. And you know what I read, Mark? This yeah. is so cool. When you laugh. The muscles in your back relax, oh. and so that helps your back. Yeah. If you're having back trouble today, just laugh a lot, and your muscles are going to oh. relax. Yeah. What about the muscles in your front? 
I'm sure, oh yeah, it's good for your abs. Your abs. So if you don't want to do those ab My abs exercises, are already just getting laugh. too defined, so I'm going to have to watch them abs. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey, and you know, I go to scripture. I always say, and you're better looking when you laugh, mm -hmm. when you're happy. When you're happy. Happy makes you better looking. And it's an instant face lift. Yeah, but you know that t-shirt that said, I might be fat, but you're ugly and I can lose weight. That's not nice. <laughs> That's not very nice. <laughs> How about the t-shirt that said, I make a great second impression. <laughs> oh, uh, all right, we'll get into the word. We're just having a little too much fun here. And um, so we're going to look at Paul's revelation, Paul's system of truth, mm -hmm. and some on the life of Paul all of this week, and you can clearly see we're not finished, so we may have to carry it on next week. Um, we'll just because, carry on. Yeah, just carry on. So, and studying Paul's system of truth, Romans chapter 6 and verse 17 is uh, the verse that we started studying this on and broke Paul's system of truth down into eight major points mm -hmm. concerning our redemption and concerning what happened from the cross to the throne. So Paul's system of truth, Romans 6, 17 says, you obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which mm -hmm. was delivered to you or that teaching. And uh, so Paul's uh, form of doctrine, he said that sets you free from sin because mm -hmm. it changed the way you think, changed the way you see, changed your perspective, changed the way you see yourself, changed the way you see your life. And so Paul's revelation or Paul's system of truth, and we get the terminology from Weymouth's translation. Right. And so the King James says that form of doctrine, and then uh, Weymouth says that system of truth in which you were instructed. So in Paul's system of truth, that means every place he went, his revelation, he would teach the same thing. Mm -hmm. So if it's in Ephesians or Colossians or Romans, it all centered around what happened on the cross. So Paul said, I will glory in the cross. Right. So what happened in the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Christ is the center of Paul's system of truth. So there's eight points to Paul's system of truth. Mm -hmm. And so you can get the book free, Paul's system of truth. Just go to the website and get that free. And then you can study it. And we'll be studying it, I'm sure, some more today and some more uh, maybe even next week. Paul's system of truth. Mm -hmm. So what is that system of truth? Well, there's eight points, and I'm going to give them to you real fast because sometimes we get stuck on one, and then we uh, will actually uh, uh, not even finish. Well, I'm in so faith. So let's finish. I'm in faith that all you're right. going to go through all the all way All eight points. Number one is man is a spirit. He has a soul, lives in a body, and the definition and the interaction between spirit, soul, and body and the Apostle Paul's revelation is really the most um, detailed explanation of man himself, spirit, soul, and body, made of three parts. And what happened when you got saved, what happened when you're born again. So number one is spirit, soul, and body, our Paul's pneuma concept. Number two <coughs> is identification with Adam. One man, Adam, affected every man. Number three, man's condition in Adam. In other words, what happened because of our identification with Adam, Adam's sin, how it affect the whole human race. Number three is man's condition. And Paul spends as much, almost as much time talking about man's condition in Adam as he does man's condition in Christ. Because once you understand man's condition, then you realize the necessity of what happened on the cross. So number four is what happened from the cross to the throne, not just what happened in the scene, but what happened in the unseen. Not just what man saw, but what God saw and what Satan saw. So what happened from the cross to the throne, why it was necessary, the reality of the death and the resurrection of Christ, that Jesus is alive, that he is Lord. And so one, one writer said, I think it's P.C. Nelson, he said that the New Testament stands on these two pillars, the resurrection of Christ and the conversion of the Apostle Paul. Because the Apostle Paul was, his testimony is in the book of Acts three times, Acts 9, Acts 22, Acts 26, how he met Jesus. And he had such a radical turnaround. And then the letters that he wrote, he must have personally met Jesus Christ. It changed his life so radically. And then his letters and Paul's revelation. And so you can see the importance of the conversion of Paul. And he asked Jesus, who are you, Lord? 
and what do you want me to do? Two things. Who are you, Lord? And so he spent the rest of his life finding out who Jesus is and what Christ has done for us. And so you see that in Paul's letters and in Paul's revelation, Romans, Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Colossians, phenomenal stuff. Even the book of Hebrews, phenomenal things about who Christ is. Who are you, Lord, and what do you want me to do? So we see Paul's uh, revelation, Paul's conversion, and we see Paul's conversion three times in the book of Acts. So that's number four is what happened from the cross to the throne, the resurrection of Christ. And Paul had seen something awesome in the resurrection of Christ. In other words, go to Ephesians chapter 1. We're going to get that in just a second, but let me finish these. Ephesians chapter 1. And so this is what we call Paul's prayer, but it's also part of his revelation. So what happened from the cross to the throne? Number five is identification with Christ. Wow, the moment you make Jesus the Lord of your life, everything God did in Christ, he did it for us, set to the credit of our account, just like we did it. We were identified with him, given the same identical life, same identical resurrection, authority, blessing, and victory, our identification with Christ. That's why you have Galatians 2.20, where Paul said, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Actually, Galatians 2.20 is the testimony of every believer, which is our identification with Christ. So then that's number five. Number six is who we are and what we have now in Christ, 130 in Christ, in him, in whom scriptures, in Christ. We'll get to that a little bit later. And then number uh, seven is what Jesus is doing for us now at the right hand of God. We call this the present day ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ as our high priest, as our advocate, as our intercessor, what Jesus is doing now at the right hand of God for us. And then number eight is how to grow up spiritually. Grow up spiritually through the renewing of your mind, through being filled with the Holy Spirit, and also through taking your place in the body of Christ. We call that supernatural relationships and fellowship. And so how to grow up spiritually. So go to Paul's prayer in Ephesians chapter 1. We want to look at this because this is a very important part of Paul's system of truth or Paul's revelation. So Ephesians chapter 1 Mm -hmm. Ready? I'm ready. All right. So you want to read that Ephesians chapter 1 prayer starting with maybe verse 16. And uh, uh, let's read it. I got yes. the King James. What do you have? The Amplified? Well, I got a lot of things. You got the I Amplified. Have your, uh, I've had the Amplified. But we have the Scripture Study Guide, which is um, amazing. I, I'll read it in the King James. And then if you want to, you and, can read it in the Well, Amplified. I just was looking here in Ephesians, the first chapter. Okay. Because this prayer follows what Paul is talking about, you know, he introduces this letter and he tells the church at Ephesus that they are blessed with every spiritual mm -hmm. blessing in the heavenly places. They are chosen, they are adopted, and there's a purpose that God is mm -hmm. unfolding uh, in the church. And then he says he lavished on the church uh, every kind of mm -hmm. wisdom and wow. understanding making known to us the mystery of his will, the secret of his plan, of his purpose. And it's this, that uh, we all can be uh, brought to maturity hmm. in Christ. And so there's a plan, there's a purpose, and it's full of wisdom, hmm. God's wisdom and knowledge. And so Paul is talking all about that, and then he comes up and he says, I don't cease to give thanks for you. Hmm. And I make mention of you yeah. in my prayer. So he saw what, and he presents what God has done for us, how he raised us up, we're hmm. chosen, and we're in his image, and there's a secret plan that's coming forth mm -hmm. in the body, in the church. Yeah. And it is necessary that there is prayer that we can understand. Um. And so, Paul, uh, that prayer in Ephesians, beginning with verse 16 wow. or 17, is This power. is a, a New Covenant, New Testament prayer. We need so, to pray this. So our fellowship and our prayer has taken on a new light because mm -hmm. of 
Paul's revelation. So right. this prayer in Ephesians 1.17, maybe you have your Bible and you can just uh, look at it with us. And this is the prayer that we were instructed to pray uh, daily, mm -hmm. more than once, uh, preferably, by Dad Hagen or Kenneth E. Hagen. He said, if you'll take this prayer and pray it every day, and he said, and pray it more than once if possible. Right. He said, but don't miss a day. He said, the first thing that'll happen is the Bible will become a different book to mm -hmm. you. In other words, the way you receive revelation, the way you receive the word of God will change. And so your experience with the word, it'll take the word from just being a doctrinal thing to be an experience with God. I so remember when I first met Mark, you know, you were at college and you had that big afro, so cute. But <laughs> he had in his pocket of his jeans the copy of a little, what he had written down, Ephesians 1 prayer. And you would take that card out of your back pocket and you would read that card several times a day. That was new to me. Mm -hmm. That was something I learned from you. Yeah. And how important that is. So Ephesians 1 prayer. I just followed instructions. So you Dad Hagen said, you do did that. It. I just decided to do it. So I carried around that little card and I'd pull it out. Even, even for years, I pulled that out as uh, uh, going through college, the Bible mm -hmm. college, four years. Then I worked at valet parking to make some money to pay my bills. And, and so valet parking in Dallas at the uh, Chateaubriand and at the Oz. And so several of us students worked there and we parked uh, uh, valet parking for Howard Cosell, a bunch of movie stars, Dallas Cowboys. And so uh, we were, thought we were in a pretty, pretty uh, high cotton. We made a little money. But in between parking those cars, which mm -hmm. is pretty fancy cars, which, which actually <laughs> increased my vision of the possibility. And so I'm parking all these cars, and by faith I'm saying, I think I'll have one of these cars one of these days. <laughs> and so uh, uh, believe in God. And so uh, your faith in God is connected to uh, revelation knowledge. Every breakthrough in faith comes from a breakthrough mm -hmm. in revelation knowledge. So here's Paul's prayer in Ephesians 1, and he says, this is how I'm praying for you. So you can pray for yourself this way, or you can pray for other believers instead of criticizing them and what they're going through, even though they're born again, spirit-filled. Then you just say, let's pray for them right now. And here's the prayer. Pray for yourself. Put your name in there, or you can put someone else's name in there. This prayer works. Yeah, so Father God, I'm asking you, and here he says, verse 17, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, he, notice he calls God the Father of glory. Mm -hmm. The God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The eyes. Oh, so now he's talking about the way you see. Right. Your eyes. So faith comes not only by how you hear, mm -hmm. but how you see. Right. So he says your eyes, he said this revelation will affect uh, your hearing, but it's also going to affect your speaking, but it's also going to affect your vision. Right. The eyes. All right. So he says the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. Ah, what does that mean? The Let eyes of your heart, <laughs> one translation says, to be what? Flooded with light. Light is understanding. Uh, didn't Jesus say something about the light of the body is your eyes? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. if your eyes are single, your whole body will be filled with light. Well, that would include healing, wouldn't it? Right. So when Paul says the eyes of your heart, the eyes of your understanding, flooded with light. That's, that's what you call the difference between just information and revelation. In other words, this is, uh, Paul is saying, the things that he saw, what we call Paul's revelation, are available to every believer. Amen. All right, let's try that one more you time. Know, Paul's revelation, mm -hmm. what he saw, he said, is available to every believer. But you access it this way. Mm -hmm. And yesterday we were talking about man as a spirit, has a soul, lives in a body. And so I like this new English Bible translation of his prayer it says that God would give you the spiritual powers of wisdom and vision. It's not mental power, but it's something's happening in your spirit. It's spiritual powers, mm -hmm. and those powers are wisdom and vision. Yeah. In the knowledge of God. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, so this prayer, you pray for yourself, pray for other people when you feel like they 
I may be struggling in some area, but here he says, I'm praying for them. And you say, I'm praying for myself. I prayed for myself. Father God, I'm asking you, this is what I want for Christmas. <laughs> uh, you know, this is, this is what I want. What and I, I feel need. like according to your word is really my greatest need. It's on the top of the list. And yet I grew up in church, you know, loving the Lord and I, mm -hmm. the Bible stories. And I really love the Lord, but uh, I had trouble with my dedication. You know what that means? You were probably up one day and doing <coughs> good one day and not the next day. Dedication. Maybe you one week. Maybe I lasted a whole week. Right. <laughs> so that but, makes you frustrated. But eventually my dedicator broke or it wore out. <laughs> so I was really thinking, I really got some dedicator problems. So, so we just tried to dedicate, rededicate, and there's really nothing wrong with that. No. I mean, uh, but should. here Paul's prayer is not just for more dedication. His prayer is for revelation knowledge, mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. you and I to see personally. And he says that revelation of Christ has the power to affect your dedication. You say it fuels your dedication. Fuels your dedication. Yeah. In other words, your, your dedication really cannot go any further than really your revelation mm -hmm. and your identification with Christ, mm -hmm. all right? So he says that God, so apparently God's the one that you're talking to. Right. Because God's the one that unlocks revelation knowledge. It's like uh, Moses, you know, when he had a vision of God, yeah. he was dedicated to lead the whole, yeah, his dedication. The whole uh, tribe of Israel, you know, bring them all out of bondage. Yeah. And then also Abraham, he had a vision of God. He saw yeah. heaven. The God it's, of glory yeah. appeared to Abraham. And Abraham went out and just served God. The scripture says he went out alone. In other words, he didn't have a whole lot of faith friends, but his revelation was so strong. Mm -hmm. I mean, think about Noah building the ark and, and everybody laughing, never even rained before. Mm -hmm. So you see everybody in Hebrews 11 in the faith chapter right. had a revelation of God, a revelation of the word or the promises of God. And so that's where faith comes from. If you want to be strong in faith, you must be strong in revelation. Knowledge. So this revelation is not just reserved for a few people. Yeah. You know, few who God picks out. No, but this prayer is for the whole church. Every individual. Believer. God wants to reveal himself personally to every member of the body of Christ. Yeah. So that we can know our our hope of our calling. Yeah. I guess everything that's in this prayer. Yeah, Jesus is big enough to reveal himself to you personally, mm -hmm. and he has time to do it. I mean, there's something about Jesus that he can, he'll show himself to you. And it says in the gospel of Luke, uh, that when G, while they're talking about the scriptures, Jesus showed up and, and explained the scriptures to them. And they said, did not our heart burn within us while he explained the scriptures. So real revelation knowledge is not just an intellectual thing, but it will start a fire in your heart. Right. All right. So when he says, Father God, so the point is that you're asking God, Father God, I'm asking you for further light, one translation says, right. further revelation. And Dad Hagen said, if you'll do something with the revelation you got, God will give you more. Yeah, that's right. It says, <laughs> some people say, oh, you should only pray that prayer one time. But I like the NIV translation, it says, I keep asking. Yeah, so this is a different kind of prayer. This is a continuous prayer because revelation is continuous. And so some people say, well, you just have faith in God's giving you a measure of faith, and that's all you need. But actually, the, 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 the substance of faith is the Word, our revelation of the Word. So if you could grow in revelation knowledge, you could actually grow in faith. In other words, your faith could be strengthened mm -hmm. just through further light and revelation given to you. So this prayer is good to uh, use for strengthening or being going from faith to yeah. faith. So if we continue to pray this prayer, it's a prayer that the Holy Spirit inspires us. Yeah, so Paul's whole system of truth 
comes from his personal revelation of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And Jesus, I, I like to say, Paul had seen something awesome. I want you to see that real quickly mm -hmm. here, because here it says, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you know the hope of his calling, the riches of the glory of his inheritance. And look at verse 19. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe mm -hmm. according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead. Wow. So what happened, the kind of power that the kind of explosion and energy right. that God used when he raised Christ from the dead, these are not just words that Paul is writing words. Paul had personally <laughs> seen what happened when God raised Christ from the dead, he saw the greatest explosion. It's kind of like, I like to say in Genesis chapter one, uh, Moses wrote the Pentateuch, first five books of the Bible. So Moses wrote Genesis chapter one. So I said, well, how did he write it? <laughs> well, nobody was there at that time. So how did he write Genesis chapter one? In the beginning, God created the heavens and earth. And what happened was Moses <coughs> must have been in his tent and God said to Moses, let me show you what happened in creation. Mm -hmm. And Moses must have seen that. And Moses said, let me write that down. Mm -hmm. Right? So revelation knowledge is more than just information. The eyes of your heart are affected. So Paul must have had a vision and Jesus must have showed him what happened in the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. And that same information is available to every believer. Amen. Carpenter translation says, may the eternal wisdom make you wise. May mm. all the veils be torn away. Well, so far as that may be in this life, the full glory of revelation come flooding in upon you. Wow. God wants this flooding of light yeah. to fill every believer yeah. and every veil, you know, misunderstanding and things that you don't understand about God. He wants us to have full mm. revelation wow, and to light, grow in it. The light of the light. who he is, the light of his presence and the light of what happened on the cross, the death and resurrection right. of Christ. In other words, that light, tremendous power, tremendous explosion that raised Christ from the dead. Just Whoa. think about when Paul met Jesus for the first time. All right, yeah. He yeah. was blinded with the light. A Acts 9, Acts 22, Acts 26. <laughs> so what happens is uh, you can go to our website and you can download these messages called Revelation Knowledge Breaking Barriers. And so they just handed me these because if you want to study this some more, just go so to the markhankins.org and say, I want the free book, Paul System of Truth. I also want that CD set on, on uh, Revelation, Not a Breaking Barriers. But instead of just getting the CD, all you got to do is just go there and download it. Four messages on Breaking Barriers, Revelation Knowledge, Advance in Faith through Revelation Knowledge, and the Manhattan Project. <laughs> Paul's new That's one. an explosion. I, I don't know. Why? I think... I would get this set just downloaded at the website free. And I think I'd get that just to study the Manhattan Project, so which good. is the tremendous explosion of what happened when God raised Christ from the dead. That's, so that's called Revelation Knowledge on markhankers.org. And the free book we're giving to you is Paul's System of Truth, Paul's Revelation and his person and his ministry. And so this book is our gift to you. So just go to the website and order that book. Say, I want that book. And if you don't like uh, internet, you can just call and get it. Um, one of the things you cover in this book is how Paul, after he was first converted, you know, saw Jesus, and then he just kind of disappeared for a while. Yeah. And that's when things that he had learned as a religious, yeah scholarly as a Pharisee uh, you know as a Pharisee he learned all the scriptures but it was in a different way yeah and Jesus had to wow. knock him down shake him up and then he went into school yeah where he unlearned yeah. that religious training yeah and then he learned the new yeah. system of truth yeah. and sometimes it's a process where you I remember Mark when I began to pray this Ephesians 1 prayer and we were at Southwestern. Mm. And I remember going into one of the music rooms, the practice room, and I got down on the 
on the floor, knelt down, and I began to pray this prayer. Mm. Yeah, that, that was the Southwestern Assembly yeah. of God Bible Call. And it was like I was confronted with holding on to religious ideas mm. that I had mm. or receiving the spirit yeah. of wisdom and revelation mm. and walking by faith in God yeah. and His Word. And it was at that moment I let go of some things. Yeah. Your old way and of thinking. And there's a moment like, Paul, you know, Jesus. It's life changing. Show me. Life changing. Reveal to me. And that was life changing to me. So this, if you want uh, your Christian life to change or to progress, this prayer would be the most important thing you could do. It is inspired by the Holy Spirit. Ma'am. And you just say, Father God, I'm asking you. In other words, this is between you and God, the sincerity of your heart. Mm -hmm. that you're hungry for God, and you're saying, Father God, I'm asking you, I like to say it this way, God's kingdom system of revelation knowledge has never been hacked. Mm -hmm. In other words, you can steal information, but you cannot steal revelation. You just humble yourself and say, Father God, I'm asking you that you would give unto me the spirit of yeah. wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of God. The eyes of my heart to be flooded with light. This is really the source of your faith. Amen. And you know, I think, Mark, the times that we're living in, Jesus is coming soon. There's all kinds of shaking and rattling going on in our world. And sometimes that takes our attention. Mm. And we need to turn our eyes off of those things and turn them on to Jesus because yeah. He will flood us with light and the energy and the resurrection power that the church can rise well, up and be Jesus in the earth. Yeah, the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. And so Paul's mm -hmm. system of truth or Paul's revelation mm -hmm. changes the way you see, changes your perspective. And actually Paul said that if anyone is in Christ, that you become a new Amen. creature. Old things are passed away and Everything has become new. So you're not the same person mm -hmm. and you're not even the same kind of creature that you used to be. Right. You're a new kind of human produced by what happened on the cross. So your identity doesn't come from Ancestry.com or studying all the people of your particular name or your particular appearance. No, no, your identification now has turned totally to Jesus Christ. He is your Lord. And, and when Jesus was on the earth speaking, he came from a different place. He came from the kingdom of heaven. And he would speak words that they didn't understand mm -hmm. and that made them mad. Yeah. He spoke with authority. That made him mad. And I believe as a church, we rise up in this revelation of who we are in Christ, his resurrection power working in us, words of faith, boldness. It's going to make the religious mm. world mad. It's going to make the kingdom of darkness angry. They well, might not like you, but that's okay. Yeah, it, Jesus even made the Pharisees yeah. mad. I, I like to say this. I said, it seemed like Jesus uh, disliked self-righteousness yeah. more than he dis. <laughs> more than he disliked unrighteousness. In other right. words, we know that, that sin is a problem, but it seemed like Jesus got along with sinners better than he got along with religious Pharisees. Mm -hmm. So he disliked self-righteousness more than unrighteousness. Yeah. All right, so Paul's system of truth brings you to a whole new system of teaching. That's good. And actually the Living Bible even says that. It says the old system. It's in Hebrews chapter 9 in the original Living Bible. The old system was done away and a new system came because of the cross and the blood of Christ and the resurrection of Christ. So Paul's system of truth is a network of the reality of what happened from the cross to the throne and who you are in him. In other words, it changes your whole identity. Who you wow. are in Christ. So we so, need to know every part of this system. Yes, eight points. So here, let's finish the, the prayer because we're looking at Paul's prayer for us. And as believers, and if you'll notice, most of Paul's prayers were for believers. Yeah. Why? Because once a believer or a Christian or the church or the body of Christ, once a believer stands in their place of authority, 
and it'll change the world. That's right. In other words, we can change a generation, mm -hmm. but it can only happen by revelation. Mm -hmm. So the Holy Spirit is the head of God's revelation department. Mm. He's not just the head of God's goosebump department. <laughs> in other words, people say, oh, I feel it. I feel it. Well, thank God you can feel the anointing and it's tangible. But the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. Mm -hmm. Jesus said the spirit of truth. And so in Paul's system of truth, mm -hmm. Jesus said, you know the truth and the truth will set you free. So Satan is a deceiver. Yeah. And that's why James it says, receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save your soul. Mm -hmm. And then he says, but don't just be hearers only. Right. He said, if you're just a hearer, you deceive yourself. He said, but be doers of the word, act on the word, obey the word. So it's really just two kinds of unbelief. Mm -hmm. In other words, uh, I was, <laughs> the Lord said to me kind of this way. He said, if unbelief is curable, there's nothing that is incurable. I said, well, Wow, because I got that from Mark 9, 23. Jesus said, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. And so if you can cure unbelief, mm -hmm. then there's nothing that is incurable because with God, all things, if you can believe, all and, things And believing comes from a revelation of the will of God. Yeah. And once you get that, that's a spirit of wisdom and mm. revelation. That It's like an explosion that happens. And unbelief goes out the door, and your belief uh -huh. in God is strong. Your, your belief system, mm -hmm. uh -huh, let's uh -huh. call it that. So, so you're believing, mm -hmm. and so there's two kinds of unbelief. Right. And you're a believer. Dad Hagen, you said, you're a believer, why don't you act like a believer instead of acting like a doubter? <laughs> <laughs> and so two kinds of unbelief. First kind of unbelief is simply a lack of knowledge mm -hmm. of the Word of God. Or you could say this first kind of unbelief is, is curable mm -hmm. through knowledge or revelation knowledge of the Word of God. Mm -hmm. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. Mm -hmm. So the moment you hear the Word and the moment you receive the Word appropriately, faith is there. The moment the light comes, faith is there. That's right. So first kind of unbelief is lack of knowledge. And that's why Jesus went about teaching and teaching and teaching and teaching. And Paul went about teaching and teaching. He said, I'm a teacher. I'm a preacher. I'm an apostle. And so Paul was a teacher. And matter of fact, Paul would teach all night long, it says in the book of Acts. <laughs> so one guy fell out the window and, and died, apparently. And he went out, raised him from the dead, and then came back in church, finished his sermon. So, <laughs> Well, I've known uh, long-winded preachers. Oh, yeah, I know a few of them myself. not that long-winded. <laughs> <laughs> but I've never preached all night long. But, but Paul, uh, the teaching, the information, the revelation uh, of the Word of God. And so the first kind of unbelief is what? Lack of knowledge. Right. That means you're just ignorant and ignorance is curable. Right. <laughs> so, so thank God ignorance is curable. Uh, stupidity needs a little bit more <laughs> help, but ignorance <laughs> is curable. So you just don't know, or sometimes people don't know how much they don't know. It's like that joke. Or they tell. think they know more than they know. You tell about the uh, man who had a flat tire. <laughs> I forgot that. Now, you remember my jokes better than I do. So my daddy told this joke all the time about, about the, um, the man who had a flat tire mm -hmm. uh, by the mental institution. Right. He had a flat tire by the mental institution, so he was going to have to change the flat. So while he's changing the flat, a man that's in the mental institution came over by the fence and was watching him. Mm -hmm. And so this guy's changing his flat, so he, he took the flat tire off and he put the lug nuts in the... Uh, uh, hub cap right there and so then he's trying to get that tire away and he put the new tire on and when he did he bumped the hub cap and all the lug nuts went down into a drain in the street and he was just sitting there like oh man I lost all the lug nuts I can't put the tire on there and he's just sitting there like, oh what a disaster and so the guy in the middle institute says hey mister he said uh, why don't you take one lug nut from each one of the other wheels <laughs> and put it on that one, and then you can drive somewhere until you can get some more lug nuts. And the guy went, 
Wow, he said, that's pretty amazing. <laughs> he said, all right. So he took one off each one, and he put it on there, got it on there. And so he said, man, he said, I'm surprised you being in a mental institution and you told me how to do that. And the guy said, well, I might be crazy, but I'm not stupid. <laughs> So, so, so sometimes, what's well, well, stupid? Somebody said, "Life is hard. It's harder if you're stupid." But so, uh, who was that? Uh, John Wayne, of course. But uh, uh, living uh, um, uh, without uh, accurate knowledge, my daddy always said, "Ignorance is expensive." Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just you don't know. It's expensive. In other words, the wisdom of God, the Book of Proverbs, and the wisdom of God coming from Paul's revelation, and so. I always tell the story about the uh, the dad who was having a, a conflict with his teenage son. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's having a conflict with his teenage son. He said, boy, what is the matter with you? I taught you everything I know, and you still don't know nothing. <laughs> he didn't realize what he was he saying, didn't apparently. He didn't know much. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, then my, my, dad, uh, my dad and my mom were having an argument one time in the house, you know, the, a discussion. A discussion. A conflict discussion. And so they're having a conflict, and so my, my dad got a little frustrated with my mom, and he said, I just want to know what's wrong with you. <laughs> my mama said, I don't know. It must be the preaching I've been listening to the last 30 years. <laughs> so my dad was like, oh. So, so sometimes while pastors are criticizing their church members, <laughs> might be the preaching maybe to listen to the last 30 years. So, so really sometimes we don't know what we don't know. So that's why we need to pray this prayer, Mark. It is constantly progressive. This prayer is, Revelation of. is relating exactly what we need to pray. Yes. God, and open the eyes of my heart. Yeah. Flood my heart with light so that I can know yeah. something. See things from God's perspective mm -hmm. and see what happened from the cross to the throne is the center of our faith. Faith in the blood of Jesus mm -hmm. and faith in in the power of God, he said that power is towards us who believe. Yeah, this he says that you will know the hope in this prayer, the hope of his calling. God's plan for your life. The riches of the glory of his inheritance. The tremendous inheritance. Woo, and the exceeding greatness of his power towards you who believe. Same power that raised Jesus from the dead. Yeah, and so Those tremendous. Three elements that we ask for. Tremendous we continue to ask power. For. Yes. So there is no power shortage. It's so, I'm just so weak, I just don't have enough power. And somebody may tell you, well, you got, you know, a certain disease or you got a problem in your life and you just feel like that mountain is immovable. But really there's no power shortage. No. And so the access to the power comes from revelation knowledge. So the biggest hindrance to faith is lack of knowledge. The, and so there's two kinds of unbelief. Number one is lack of knowledge. And number two is being unpersuaded to act on the word of God. Right. Or you'd call that disobedience. Mm -hmm. In other words, you know what the word says and you disobey. And so that's unbelief. So uh, to not pray this prayer if we know to pray this prayer, is disobedience. And we're missing out on the plan of God in our lives. <coughs> well, just but. to consistently mm -hmm. pray this prayer. So I encourage you, if you want the Bible to become a different book to you, you want life to become different to you in your life, you want changes, the first place the changes happen is in revelation knowledge. And it takes us, uh, we have to humble ourselves. Yeah. And pray this prayer. Sometimes if we, when we don't, we become proud. We think, I know it all. Hmm. But as we humble ourselves and say, Lord, this is what I'm asking today. Yeah. Given to me the spirit of wisdom and revelation. I know you, but I want to know you more. Yeah. I want to know the hope <coughs> of your calling. Yeah. I want to know the riches of the glory of your inheritance in me. Hmm. Show to me. I'm a believer. Reveal yeah. to me the power that raised Jesus from the dead. Wow. Praise God. Wow, put and all things under his <clears throat> all things under his feet. Gave him to be the head over all things to the church. Now listen to this prayer in Colossians chapter one. This is the last thing I got we gotta cover right now here today. Colossians mm -hmm. chapter one and verse nine through fourteen. Colossians mm -hmm. one, nine through fourteen. This is another prayer, and this is really a 
combination of Ephesians 1, Ephesians 3 prayer, and we'll get to this tomorrow. He says, to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will. Oh, that you might good. be filled with the knowledge of his will. In other words, God wants us to know what his plan, his will, his purpose for our yeah. life. To know, he says, that we might be filled with the knowledge of his will and with all wisdom and spiritual understanding. He says that you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Wow. Wow. Strengthen with all might according to his glorious power unto all uh, perseverance, glorious power, patience, long suffering. And he says, with joyfulness, giving thanks unto the Father, giving thanks unto the Father. He says, as who is qualified and able us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in life, who hath delivered us from the dominion, power, control of darkness, and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son, in him in whom we have present possession, redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness, but that word forgiveness is the Greek word remission, even the absolute remission of sin, which means the forgiveness, cancellation of penalty, and the removal of guilt and sin consciousness. That's the power of the blood of Jesus. Both of these prayers, Ephesians 1 and Colossians 1, are asking God to give us revelation in the knowledge mm -hmm. of His will, revelation in the knowledge of what He's done for us. So there is something that the yeah. Holy Spirit is wanting us to ask for is knowledge. God, I, I want to know you. I yeah. want to know what your word is saying, know what your will is in my life. Wow, that's a perfect prayer to ask. It is amazing. So as we study Paul's revelation, the life of Paul and Paul's system of truth, then you just go to markhankins.org. You say, I want the free book on Paul's system of truth. And you see mine's a little marked up here because this is the one I've been. It's I've marked. Been, it's marked. This is the one I've been <laughs> uh, restudying going over. Also, you can get the Ephesians 1 and Ephesians 3 prayers. These will come with the book. These are free. And so you just carry that around in your Bible, carry it in the book, pull that out and pray that, those two prayers. And so the book is free. It's our gift to you. Uh, and you can call the office if you're intimidated by, by the Internet or website. But while you're at MarkHankins.org, you can download free these messages on Revelation Knowledge Breaking Barriers. Wow, that's one of my favorite sets. And then this one is on the precious blood of Jesus and Paul's revelation on absolute remission. So download those free. We make them available to you. But really, it doesn't just come from us. We have the I Spirit like Field Scripture this. Study Guide. And so to order that, then you have to order that. You and, know what uh, it has? You always say one of your favorite chapters in this. It's, it's uh, how many translations? Over 120 different translations yes. that are used in different topics. Now that one is $35. If you want to order that one, that book, it takes a lot of production it's to one put of it our together. Favorites. So you but can order uh, the scripture study guide. It has a section on prayer and this is one you really like. It has many translations on these prayers that we're talking about. That is phenomenal, yes. So powerful and yeah. it'll help us pray. I had mine out this morning at the house. So this you can order from the website if you just want to go there and order it. Uh, Spirit Field Scripture Study Guide is scriptures in 120 different translations mm -hmm. on Paul's prayers, on identification with Christ. So if you don't have this, some of you may already have it, but that is $35. You can order that on the website. Now, we want to thank you for uh, just being a part of these Bible studies, but also Galatians chapter 6 and verse 6 said, when you and I have been taught in the word that we are to communicate to the one who teaches in all good things. That means however you are blessed, he said, when you receive instruction in the word of God, you be a blessing where you have received that instruction. So you've been taught in the word of God. He said, and share all good things with your teacher, contributing or simply being a partner. So in Paul's letters in Philippians, Paul constantly talks about that church being a partner with them and the different ones as partners. And he said, because you were a partner 
Amen. Thank God for partners. I like to tell people, show me who your partner's with and I'll show you your future. Mark. So they partners. gave once and then they gave again yes. in Philippians. And so giving, and he said, and the giving came to where you were receiving revelation knowledge. That's right. Because I think the giving affects how you receive the word. Mm -hmm. But also as a partner, you're helping us preach the word in nations around the world. And so thank you for being a partner. You can give one time or you can say, I can be, I want to be a monthly partner. We had someone just call the office this morning and I don't know if he's watching right now, but he may watch this. <laughs> Anthony Wade from Columbus, Ohio. Praise and God. he called the office this morning and he said, I've been wanting to be a partner for a long time. <laughs> he said, and I'm starting today. So I encourage you. If you're not a partner, you say, I'm so thankful for the word. I want to be a partner to help other people get the word. And so you just say, I'm going to do that today. So you just call our office or you get on the internet there on markhankers.org and you say, I'm going to be a partner today. You can also give. You can text to give. You can also just mail in a check. The address is there on your screen. But Anthony Wade, God bless you. Amen. And what happened was he said, we were at Kenneth Copeland's uh, Southwest Believers uh, convention in yeah. Fort Worth, Texas last year. And Brother Copeland saw us. He called us out. He said, there's Mark and Trina Hankin. He said, I'm a partner with them. He said, I give to their ministry. And then he said, I read their partner letter every month. He said, I would be a partner with Mark and Trina Hankins. He said, just so I could get the partner letter every month. So wow. he said, I read it every month. He said, it is loaded. So every month we send out a special letter written by me and you, and that letter goes right out to our partners to strengthen your faith. And so we encourage you to be a partner. Get the partner letter. When it comes in the mail, open that thing up and read it because it is full of faith. Amen. Amen. And so thank you to our partners. We uh, thank you so much, Anthony Wade. We're also thankful to our board members, Ann Adcox, Jim and Wanda Quillen, and Pastor Dave and Vicki Sharon. They're on our board, so they are constantly partnering with us. Bless. So the word is growing, multiplying. So you can say, I want to thank Mark and Trenna for that word, but also you ought to say, I want to thank all the partners. <laughs> and so the word's going That's in so right. many different countries. But here's Anthony Wade, Columbus, Ohio. Thank you for being a partner. And Carrie and Edith Carlin, they pastor Glory of God Worship Center in Denham Springs, Louisiana. Louisiana. Baton Rouge area. We love Carrie and Edith. Mm -hmm. Thank you for being a partner. And Jody and Tanya Carson in Traverse City, Michigan from City Church. They are partners. Thank you for being a partner. And Michelle DePina from Papano Beach, Florida, and she is a partner. Thank you, Michelle. And Jerry and Michelle DeSoma from Missouri City, Texas, they pastor. Thank you for being a partner. Jay and Janice Dickey from Ohio, thank you for we being a partner. And Abner wow. Yoder, what who is in great. heaven right now. Abner and Esther and Abner went to heaven, but he's still a partner. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, thank you. Uh, Jay and Janice Dickey, and that's uh, Janice's dad, Abner uh, uh, Yoder, in heaven. And so thank you for your partnership. Also, Ed and Julie Daniels from Massachusetts, from Accord, Massachusetts, Living Word World Outreach. And they also have one of our Bible schools in their church, In Christ International Bible School. And then Kenneth and Lynette Estrada, Kissimmee, Florida. They are partners every week. They are set the place on fire. God bless y'all every week. Yeah. And then Jason and Tracy Haskell and Craig, Colorado, New Creation Church. They are partners every week. God bless y'all. And then Andy and Jimmy Maddox from Haynesville, Louisiana, Living Word. They are partners every week. Woo! God bless our partners. And then Pastor David and uh, Francie Oberg. Yeah. From Reno, Nevada, yeah. Faith Alive are partners mm -hmm. every month. Thank you all for being partners, uh, David and Francis and uh, uh, the Obergs. Hallelujah. We love you. Lord. We love yep. them. Amen. Then Stan and Mary Pody, Ruston, Louisiana, Faith Church, partners every week. Every week. Woo! And Jim and Wanda Quillen, partners. Wow, they're, they're partners all the time. And then they keep adding and doing extra in Huntsville, Alabama. God bless y'all, Jim and Wanda Quillen. Uh, Terry Rowe, Springfield, Illinois. 
partner every month. God bless you Love and you. her husband, uh, Greg. They were pastoring there in Springfield, and Greg went to be with the Lord. So God bless you, Greg, in heaven. God bless you, Terry, here on the <laughs> earth. And Tony and Shirley Sharon, uh, partners from North Spring Carolina. Hope, North Carolina, from the Word of Life Christian Center. Woo! God bless you, Tony Sharon, Pastor Tony and Shirley. Love them, and that's David Sharon's brother. Brother. And then Matthew and Jennifer Tarkington from Carrollton, Texas. Faith for Life. They pastor there. And thank you so much for being partners. Josh Van Hook, I just talked to him on the phone. I think it's yesterday, and we're scheduled to go there, I think, in November. Uh, Logan, West Virginia. Word of Life. What a great church. Pastor Josh Van Hook. And Trey and Kelly Wall. Minden, Louisiana, Living Word Christian Center. They are partners every week. God bless the partners. <laughs> Woo! And so God bless the partners. That's why Paul wrote in Philippians. He said, thank you. You gave once. You gave again. He said, your giving came up before God. Think about people's giving and partners, and your giving goes up before God. Right. God watches generosity, mm -hmm. and Paul said, you received the word, and now you gave once. You gave again, and he said, and now my God shall supply all of your need according to his riches in glory by Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. So I declare that blessing in your life. And yesterday I was just looking through yeah. the deposit that comes we from our partners. Calling and out the names. Yeah. And so, I mean, we're going through the, the checks, the giving, and the, the credit cards. blessings and praying over the And so we checks. just said, in the name of Jesus, Lord, you multiply the seed sown and make all grace abound. Every partner, every giver, we were just so so amazed at the goodness of God and the blessing of God coming through the partner. Amen. And you know, uh, what's that scripture about Isaac sowed? Even in the time in the of, time of trouble. Famine, yeah. And he had double. He, you know, God uh, gave him a hundredfold. Uh, no, I'm sorry. A hundredfold. Well. So he received and he reaped a harvest a hundredfold, and then he went and redigged the wells that were stopped up. I love up. that part. So there's a harvest here yeah. on the earth, and then new wells, redigging those redigging wells, living water coming in. Revelation up. wells. Deep the wells. Life of Amen. God. Revelation Amen. knowledge. We and just so we, uh, all of you that are watching from other countries, mm -hmm. from Australia, Pakistan, Philippines, Nigeria, uh, Lebanon, Colombia, Romania, Ireland, Ukraine, India, Nepal. In other words, there's a bunch. All of you watching from all the different countries, thank you so much. We trust and believe the Word is working mightily in your life and in your nation, in your church, in Amen. your ministry. And you can... Um, download actually we'll give you a uh, what's it called a file pdf file pdf file and you will send the book to you immediately in whatever country you're in we'll send you a pdf file and uh, some of the countries that you're in we have our books in 30 different languages and so you can get the information there so we're having a blast studying paul system of truth mm -hmm. why don't we just speak a blessing and pray that our partners and those who are watching you have a spirit of wisdom and revelation Amen. in the knowledge of God. We pray for you right now. We thank you for joining with us every day, and thank you for being a partner. Just like Paul blessed his partners in the name of the Lord Jesus yes. Christ, we pray a special blessing on you Amen. for your giving, for your prayers for us, for being a partner with us, and the gospel of Christ and the revelation of what happened from the cross to the throne, the blood of Jesus, is going around the world, world evangelism through your partnership. So God bless you, keep you, make his countenance shine upon you, increase you, Amen. and my God shall supply all, all your of your needs. need according to his Amen. riches in glory by Jesus Christ. So tomorrow morning, 10 a.m., tomorrow morning, 10 a.m., Central Standard Time, right here from Louisiana, from our own studio, which, by the way, we're getting ready to build another studio. <laughs> and so, from our own studio, the Word is working mightily. Jesus is Lord, and faith is, is the, the victory. victory. God bless you.